This is section 9.1, angles, arcs, and their measures. A lot of this first unit is going to be, or the first section of this unit is going to be uh, regarding material that you've seen before, probably in a geometry class. Um, so a lot of it is vocabulary and basic ideas from geometry. So let's get started and see how much of this you remember. Um, if you have uh, two distinct points, you can have a line through those points and it will be a distinct line. There's only one line that passes through that line and this is the line AB. The portion of the line including the points A and B is the line segment. Okay, So what I'm going to draw now is a line segment a, B. The portion of the line that starts at A and continues through B is called ray AB, which I'm going to draw over here so it's not to get too confusing. So this would be ray A, B. An angle is formed by rotating a ray, which is called the initial side. So let's say we have a array here. It's an initial side um, around its endpoint, which is called the vertex. So this would be the vertex of the angle. And when we rotate, um, the ray will have this, this initial side. And I'm going to put the uh, rotated ray in a different color so that you can really see it. And here is the terminal side of the angle. And the angle through which we rotated it to get from the initial placement to the terminal placement is um, the angle um, that's formed by those two sides. Okay, um, now if you go counterclockwise, like this one indicates going from the initial side to the terminal side, I went counterclockwise. Uh, any counterclockwise rotation is considered a positive angle. And if we were to um, have, um, whoops, if we had gone clockwise instead of counterclockwise, the measure of that angle that results would be called a negative angle, or it would be a negative number for that angle. Okay, so that's a few um, vocabulary items. Um, so let me show you a picture of one where you have the initial side here, and let's say the terminal side is there. And to get there, you rotated this blue one clockwise to where the pink one is. And this would be your uh, angle. And it would be a negative number. So I'm going to make up a number um, just so that I can assign a value. Let's say that's about negative 150 degrees. And if you actually got something and measured it, I'm sure it's not. I just made up a number that I thought was sort of close to correct. And we might as well say what I think this one is. Let's call this a 60 degree angle. Although again, if you were to really measure it, since I just randomly drew it, it's probably not 60 degrees. But at least in this course, um, we're not going to rely on perfect drawings. Um, if I 
draw something that's pretty close and say that I intended for it to be 60 degrees, then we'll all assume that it is, even if it probably isn't if you were being super duper accurate. Um, so we're going to allow labels to tell us what the measures are instead of relying on perfect drawings. Now, you may have noticed that I measured those angles using a unit called the degree, which is probably something you're familiar with. Um, do you know if you were to go all the way around a circle, how many degrees that would be to go all the way around? And if you said 360 degrees, you're right. And you may wonder why 360 degrees was chosen, because it is kind of an arbitrary number. Well, um, there was a um, ancient civilization, and I think it was the Sumerians, but I may have uh, misremembered that, that really um, thought of the 60 the number 60 is a pretty perfect number for some reason. And so, of course, uh, there are six 60s in 360. So that, that kind of makes sense. Um, also, uh, 360 is very close to the number of days in a year. And so it may have been that with their fascination with 60, six 60s was as close as you'd get, or perhaps their measurement of how long a year was was off a little bit as well by five days um, who knows exactly why 360 well actually there's another reason why 360 was chosen um, 360 has a lot of divisors there are a lot of numbers that go into 360 evenly way more than 365 and so that may be a reason because uh, like for example if you talk about a quarter of a circle one-fourth of a circle. I'll call that a rotation to go all the way around. One-fourth of a rotation is how big? Well, 4 goes into 360 evenly, so that's a nice number, and you've probably seen that before. In fact, we have a symbol dedicated to say that something is 90 degrees. Uh, half of a rotation? Of course, 360 is divisible by 2, so this is a nice number as well. And that would be 180 degrees, which, by the way, is the measure of a straight angle, also known as a line. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so anyway, those are some of the um, nice values that you end up using and there three since 360 is divisible by so many numbers uh, some really nice angle measures can be obtained uh, with fractions of a circle so that's something that we're going to encounter quite a bit as we go forward in this course okay so there are some special names uh, for angles of, of, of various sizes. Um, how big is an acute angle? Remember this one? An acute angle measures between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. That's what makes it acute. Um, if an angle is exactly 90 degrees, we call it a right angle. And what's another special name you've heard of in this vein? Yeah, the obtuse angle. measures between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And of course, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, 
if an angle is exactly 180 degrees, it's what we call the straight angle. And we don't have special names for angles that are greater than 180 degrees or smaller than zero degrees. These are uh, names that typically are used in high school geometry um, because a lot of times what you're dealing with are triangles and of course the um, angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees so there's no triangle that has a, an angle with a measure greater than 180 degrees and that's why we don't have special names for those so we have acute triangles obtuse triangles and things like that um, so you've probably heard these terms before and that's why from 0 to 180 degrees we have special names for some of these angles all right so that's a little bit of review of stuff that you know from high school at least i hope so um do you remember what it means for um two angles to be complementary And be careful with the spelling there, otherwise you're telling someone their hair looks nice today. It's a compliment with an I after the PL. Um, the complementary um, angles do what? Do you remember? The sum of them is 90 degrees. Okay, and do you know what the one is called where the sum is 180 degrees? Yes, those are supplementary angles. And so as I introduce concepts in this course, I will very likely use a lot of these vocabulary items. So um, my expectation is that you know them and when I use them you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right so let's get into some material and see how you're doing with some of these basic types of questions that could be asked. Um, so look at the example it's about the fourth slide in or right, mine no I'm sorry it's about the sixth slide in. Um, it says, for this example, find the measure of each angle in the given figure. And so I'll copy the figure. Um, don't rely on my figure for being super duper accurate. Uh, that's what we have that drawing for. So uh, this one is 3m degrees. And this one is 6m degrees and we're supposed to find the angle measures for each of those two angles that are represented. Well those two if you notice are complementary and so the sum of 6m degrees and 3m degrees needs to be 90 degrees which means that 6m plus 3m equals 90. Collecting like terms, we have 9m equals 90. And dividing, we get m equals 10. Um, unfortunately, some of you uh, develop some habits in an early algebra class where once you've solved for the letter, you must be done and therefore the answer is 10. Actually that's not correct. Go back and reread the question. We're supposed to find the measure of each angle. Finding M is just a, a first step. So one of the angles is 3M degrees and of course 3 times 10 by substitution means that one of them is 30 degrees and the other one using a similar strategy is 60 degrees. And those are the measures of the two angles. So that was question A. 
I'm hoping you're not finding these terribly difficult. Uh, that's not the intent. It's like this is like the super duper brand new hardest stuff ever. That's not the case here. This is supposed to be pretty easily understood. Okay, so for this one, um, this angle is called 6K degrees, and this one is 4K degrees, and those two angles are supplementary, which means that 4K plus 6K would have to equal 180, so 10K would be equal to 180, which means that K is 18. So one of the angles is 6K degrees, that is 6 times 18, which is 108 degrees. And the other one is 4K degrees. Um, you may notice that I'm being extremely careful that I always put the degree symbol on the measure of an angle that's in degrees because before long we're going to be measuring angles with different units of measure. And so if you mean degrees, you've got to write degrees. Otherwise, the assumption is that you're actually in a, a, a different system of measurement if you don't, use, you don't use the degree symbol. So please be aware and make it a good habit to write the degree symbol when indeed that's what you're dealing with. All right, so the next topic that I'd like to address is the subdivision of the degree into smaller parts. Uh, you might think about uh, one degree is one three hundred and sixtieth of a circle, which is pretty small. But we're talking about things that are very far away. Um, a tiny change in the angle can mean a very huge difference between the endpoints if you're very far away of the endpoints of the two rays uh, that you're looking at. like. The angle between two stars could be tiny, but they could be millions of miles away from each other by the time you have astronomical distances involved. So we do subdivide um, ang angles measured in degrees into smaller units. So um, let me give you an idea of what that is. One degree is equal to 60 minutes, and that double hash mark is a symbol for minutes. One degree equals 60 minutes. And then, oh, and I guess we could say that um, that means that if we divide both sides of that by 60, that one minute is equal to one sixtieth of a degree if you need to know that, okay? Then one minute is subdivided and one minute has, oh my goodness, I just noticed that I used the wrong symbol. Minute is a single mark, not double mark. So let me go back and make sure I fix that. Sorry about that. That's a minute that's marked with one little mark like that. And I messed up. Ah, yikes. Okay, so anyway, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. That's when I figured out I did it wrong because I knew 60 seconds was two marks. Um, and so that double mark is actually a mark for a number of seconds. Again, I apologize. Um, so if you divide both sides by 60, that means that one second is equal to one sixtieth of a minute, which is uh, the same thing as one over 3,600. So one 3,600 of a degree. 
So it takes for one second, um, one second is equal to, oh, I'm sorry, let me take that back. Um, one degree is equal to is what I meant to say. So let me erase those. One minute, therefore, is equal to 3,600 seconds. Okay, so those are uh, some of the uh, constants that you'll need to know for converting um, answers into degrees, minutes, and seconds. So let's do a little bit of arithmetic with uh, some angles that have um, been subdivided. For example, what is 51 degrees, 29 minutes, plus 32 degrees, 46 minutes. Well, uh, I don't know about you, but when I'm adding, I'd almost rather add vertically instead of adding horizontally, especially if I'm doing this without a calculator, which you should be able to do these calculations without a calculator. And I'm going to suggest that you add the minutes together first. So 9 plus 6 is 15. Carry 1, um, 2, 3. That'll be 7, D5. And uh, that'll be 83 degrees. Okay. Now, kind of like... Uh, what we do with time, if you're doing 345 plus 52 minutes, um, you'd add 45 and 52, and that's bigger than 60 minutes, which is an hour, and you'd convert that perhaps into an, an hour and so many minutes. And that's what we're going to do here. So um, because 75 degrees, I'm sorry, 75 minutes is equal to 60 minutes plus 15 minutes, and 60 minutes is equal to 1 degree, plus 15 minutes. That means what we're going to do is we're going to carry uh, that 60 minutes over as one more degree, making this a total of 84 degrees and 15 minutes. Okay. Now, although um, having the plus signs between those is not incorrect, typically when you write things in what's called degrees, minutes, seconds, you just butt the things up next to each other. Like, I'm just going to make up something. Um, 3 degrees, 12 minutes, 8 seconds is how you'd write that which is the same thing as 3 degrees plus 12 minutes plus 8 seconds, but nobody writes the plus signs as a final answer. Maybe in doing some work you might, but um, that would not, those plus signs would not be used in communicating final answers. Okay, so let's do a subtraction problem. 90 degrees minus 73 degrees, 12 minutes. Well, again, I want to subtract vertically. And unfortunately, I don't have anything from which to subtract those 12 minutes. So what I'm going to have to do is borrow one degree, leaving 89 degrees. And that one degree I borrowed is equal to exactly 60 minutes. So. 89 degrees, 60 minutes is actually the same thing as 90 degrees. It's like saying you're 5 foot 12. Well, that's no way of saying you're 6 foot tall, right? Kind of like that. Um, but we have to have something from which to subtract. So we had to borrow 1 degree and turn it into 60 minutes so that we'd actually have subtraction uh, capable problem here. So 60 minus 12 is 48. And 89 minus 74 is 15. I'm sorry. Uh, it is 15 
but I changed the problem. Dang it. Ay, ay, ay. One of those bad days where I'm making mistakes, but that's just life. You can just get used to that. I'm going to usually catch them. It's the hope I always catch them. Um, and I guess the, the byproduct on that is that when you see me make a mistake, you figure out, oh, he's just human. Everybody makes mistakes. No big deal. At least I hope that's your, your uh, attitude. Okay, that was supposed to be 73, not 74, whatever I'd written. And 89 minus 73 is 16. And that's the correct answer I have written in my notes. So there we go. Very good. All right, so another way to subdivide degrees is to use decimal degrees. Like if I had um, one degree and 30 minutes. Well, we know that 30 minutes is half of a degree because there are 60 minutes in a degree. So that's the same thing as writing 1.5 degrees, one and a half degrees, one degree and half of a degree, the 30 minutes. And this is what we call decimal degrees. Um, so the first example I'd like to do with this is that we're going to convert 74 degrees, eight minutes and 14 seconds into decimal degrees. So this is when I actually write the addition symbols in between um, because arithmetically we are adding them and we're going to need to think of addition to get the right answer. Okay, so 74 degrees is in degrees, so I'm happy with that. The 8 minutes is not in degrees, so I'm going to need to convert that. And to convert that, I'm gonna, I can multiply anything by 1 and not change its value. So I need to think of a form of one that will work here to change minutes into degrees. And because minutes are right now up there in the numerator position, because that eight minutes could be put over one if you wanted to, I would need minutes in the denominator position for the minutes unit to cancel out. And I want degrees to be the new unit that it's going to. So I need some form of one some equality that's true about a number of degrees equal to a certain number of minutes. And we talked about these earlier. One degree is 60 minutes. So that's the form of one I'm going to multiply that by. And then to convert 14 seconds into degrees, let me use the same idea. I need for the degrees, I'm sorry, the um, seconds to cancel and for degrees to become my new unit. How many degrees are equal to how many seconds so that we can write 1 over 3600 because since they're equal that's just basically multiplying by 1 in a special form. Okay, So if you'll uh, type that into your calculator 74 plus 8 divided by 60 plus 14 divided by 3600 um, you'll get something that has a lot more digits than what I'd like for you to display and so when you get that all typed in and have an answer um, I'd like for you to always unless directions tell you otherwise round to three numbers written after the decimal point to the nearest thousandth is where I want you to assume you should round to when rounding is to the third decimal point. Um, and there will be directions sometimes for one reason or another they may say round to the nearest ten thousandth four decimal places or they might say round to six decimal places or they might say round to the nearest tenth or something like that and if the directions say to round a certain way you always follow the directions but if there are no directions and you're needing to round, we're going to use three numbers after the decimal place. It's an arbitrary decision, just like 360 was an arbitrary number chosen for the number of degrees in a circle. Okay, second one. Now let's take 
an answer in decimal degrees, 34.817 degrees, and we're going to convert it into degrees, minutes, seconds. So the idea here is to take the whole number of degrees, 34, and split it off from the decimal portion of a degree. Then multiply that decimal number of degrees by a form of 1 that will turn that decimal number of degrees into minutes. We're going to do minutes first, so I want the degrees to cancel. We're going towards minutes. How many minutes are in how many degrees? I want 60 minutes per 1 degree. And that's a form of 1 we're getting there. So this is 34 degrees. Then when you multiply 0.817 times 60, um, you should get 49.02, I believe, is what that becomes. According to my notes, that's what I got. Minutes. Okay. Now to take that into the next subdivision, separate the whole number of minutes, 49, from the decimal number of minutes, 0 0.02, and then multiply that partial minute, that 0 0.02 minutes, by a form of 1, such that the minute goes away and we convert into seconds. So how many seconds are in how many minutes? Well, there are 60 seconds in one minute. And so um, you do that multiplication. And you get 1.2 seconds. Now there's not another name for um, a subdivision of the second into smaller parts. So at that point, even if that's a decimal number of seconds, we're done with our problem, except for writing it in the normal way is all of those things butted up next to each other. So 34 degrees, 49 minutes, 1.2 seconds is our final answer. So the seconds may very well still be a decimal, but the degrees and minutes should be whole numbers. Um, so that's that. Now. Um, as we are talking about angles, um, we're going to start seeing, when we put them into an xy plane, that the initial side has a standard place where we like to see it. Um, well, in standard position, the initial side is always starting at the origin and going straight to the right. So it's using the positive part of the x-axis as the initial side. So that pink ray is the initial side. And um, anything that when you rotate it lands in this quadrant, because of course the axes um, split the plane into four quadrants, we call that a quadrant one angle. Okay, it's a quadrant one angle. And um, anything that lands in this quadrant is a quadrant two angle. And notice I'm just making bigger and bigger angles. So this angle is now bigger than the first one. And by the way, that's why you start naming quadrant one up there is because as you rotate angles around in a counterclockwise fashion, that's the first quadrant through which your terminal side goes as you rotate. And then it goes over into quadrant two and then quadrant three, and finally quadrant four as you go around the circle. Whoops. There we go, quadrant four. Um, then if the terminal side happens to be on an axis, like 
here's the initial side, and if the terminal side lands on a, an axis like on the positive y-axis, or on the positive, I'm sorry, negative x-axis, or on the um, negative y-axis, and this time I'm going to use a negative angle just to, because I can. Or it could even land on the positive x-axis and the terminal side would be um, right where the initial side is. And that would be how big of a rotation if we were going this way around. How big is that rotation? Right, that's uh, 360 degrees. So anytime the terminal side lands on an axis, we call those, we have a special name for those, those are called quadrantal angles. Quadrantal angles. I told you there was a lot of vocabulary in this first unit. And so it's just another one of those. Um, quadrantal angles terminate on an axis. And the things that land between the axes are called quadrant one or quadrant two or quadrant three or quadrant four angles. Okay. So there we go. Um, now, something happens that you may not have en encountered before, and this is very possible. Um, as you're going around, uh, from the initial side, which is always on the positive x-axis, as I said earlier, this is the initial side. If the terminal, if the angle is rotated all the way around, and then rotated some more, and you stop there. Okay, so that's the arc that gets you there. Is all the way around plus a little bit more. That's actually possible. And the angle measure of that, let's say that um, the angle, the smallest possible angle is this one that ends in the same place. And let's just say that that's 45 degrees. This other one would be all the way around 360 degrees plus another 45 which is 405 degrees. And you may have never seen angles that went beyond 360 degrees before. You may not have seen negative angles before. And these are new things perhaps to you, and they do exist, so I want to tell you about them. The terminology I'm trying to get at here is that those two angles terminate at the same place at this uh, ray right here, that one right there. And so um, these are called co-terminal angles because they have the same terminal side in the same position. The only thing that's different about them is how much did you rotate the uh, ray around from the positive x-axis to get there. If you went all the way around plus another 45, then the measure of that angle is 405 degrees and it happens to be coterminal with a 45 degree angle. And again, if they terminate in the same place, they're called coterminal angles. And um, another way to think about them is to say, oh, well, that's supposed to be straight, pretend like it is, my bad. Like if I had um, an angle that was this big, whatever size that is. Uh, let's just make up something. Let's call that 100 degrees. Pretend like that's perfect. Now, to get to a coterminal angle to that one, you would need to go all the way around. So if you're starting here and you go all the way around from there, you would need to add 360 degrees. Or 
or you could starting here go from there all the way around twice before you get back to there and that would be adding two 360s or 720 degrees and that would be coterminal to the first one um, and that picture is getting awfully crowded so let me draw another picture it's just a second rendition of the same thing is what I'm trying to do without having such a mess of things so give me a second to fix this up um, and we're saying that that's 100 degrees Oh, and by the way, um, we might as well give answers. Um, how big is this one if we've gone all the way around and then to that same place? Well, it's 100 plus 360 or 460 degrees is coterminal with 100. So I'm going to have a list here of a bunch of angles that are coterminal with 100 degrees. And that's the first one. The next one we uh, calculated. Actually, just a second. Let me. I'm, I'm kind of um, particular about color coding things so that when you look at it, it's, it makes a whole lot more sense. So, excuse me. I'm going to change something here. Um, so, 100 degrees was our first one. To get our next coterminal angle, the next biggest one after 100 is add 360 to the 100 and you get 460. Or starting with 100, add two 360s or add 720 and you get 820 degrees, which is also coterminal with 100 degrees. Or we could, starting here, go backwards clockwise and subtract 360 degrees and so if we start at 100 and subtract 360 degrees what is that negative 260 degrees is also coterminal and then if I wanted to I could start here and go all the way around clockwise twice see how messy this is and get back to that same place and that would be subtracting two 360s um, which would be subtracting 720 so 100 minus 720 is negative 620 all of these are coterminal and if we wanted a formula for how would I get coterminal angles to a given angle and I know I used 100 as an example but um, I very frequently used a variable for angles we don't use x uh, because that usually has a different meaning it's the x-axis and of course that's not the angle so we're going to call that very often theta Greek letter theta um, in a page or two you'll see a printed version of theta Let's see where that is yeah it's it's like two screens away you'll see a printed version of theta when I draw theta that's how I draw it um, well it's kind of sloppy but you get the idea let me try another one theta looks like that so coterminal angles to theta can be found by taking theta and adding a multiple of 360 degrees 360 degrees times n where n and this is going to be true a lot of times in this course when we use n like this in a formula n is um, any integer and you know what the integers are right it's all the whole numbers and their opposites 0 
1 and negative 1, 2 and negative 2, 3 and negative 3, 4 and negative 4, etc. So if I have an angle like 100 degrees, I could add 360 times 1, or add to that original angle 360 times 2, or add to that angle 360 times negative 1. I can even add that angle plus 360 degrees times 0. 0 is an integer, and um, that means I'll get back the original angle. But this is kind of a formula, if you will, for finding coterminal angles because they all differ from each other by a multiple of 360 degrees. So what type of question in the homework might you encounter having to do with this idea? Well, let's look at the next page. I'd like for you to read those directions and see what you can make out of it on your own. So I'll pause the recording and think about that and see what you can do. All right, hopefully you had some success. Um, what we're supposed to do is find the angles of smallest possible positive measure. So smallest possible positive. measure of a coterminal angle to the given angle. So um, there are several ways you could approach this. Um, I'm going to teach you kind of like the it always works and sometimes it's a pain in the butt because it's kind of monotonous, but it does work. So uh, I'll show you this and I'll then talk about shortcuts if you um, want to use them in a second. So what I would do is if it's a positive number that's fairly large, like 908 degrees, I would just start subtracting uh, 360 from that and see what I get. Um, I'm going to get my calculator out to make sure I don't make any silly mistakes. I should be able to do that in my head, but uh, I don't want to commit errors here, so... 548 degrees is the answer. Well, that's still, um, and by the way, since 360 degrees is all the way around once, we're waiting until our answer is between zero and 360 degrees before we say we're done. So 548 is still too big, bigger than 360. So I'll then subtract another 360. So it's still coterminal. And 548 minus 360 degrees is 188 degrees. That one is between 0 and 360 degrees, and so that is my final answer. Now, the shortcut would be if you realize, if you happen to know that two 360s um, are 720, if you kind of have that in your head, and um, subtract 720, from 908, you'll get to the 188 degrees faster, and that's fine. Um, just you're, multi you're either subtracting 360 one at a time until you get down to a number between 0 and 360, or you happen to know a multiple of 360, Just you just have it memorized, and you can just say, okay, I'm going to start by subtracting 720 and then see what happens. And that's fine, too. Um, both ways are fine. Uh, so. The, the first way always works, and that's kind of why I, I want to adopt it. Now, if the starting angle is negative, instead of subtracting, because we're turning it into a positive answer, we're going to add 360, and we're going to keep adding 360 until our answer is between 0 and 360 degrees. That's kind of the, the thing we're doing. So if I add uh, 360 degrees and negative 75 degrees, I get 285 degrees. And that's actually good. It's between 0 and 360 degrees. So that's my final answer. And if my initial problem had been further from 0, like negative 1,000 something degrees, I would just keep adding multiples of 360 until my answer is between 0 and 360 degrees. Uh, nothing very magical about it. Um, and again, if you knew a multiple of 360 that you could add instead of doing 360, 360, 360, if you added 720 because you knew that at least two would be needed, 
you can speed up the process some. And again, I'm, I'm happy with that. In fact, that's what I'm going to do right here. Since I've been saying it over and over again, I could say, well, I'm going to add 360 and it's still too small, still negative. So add another 360. Um, so what I'm going to do to speed that up a bit is I'm going to add 720. I know it's still not enough. I get that. It's still not enough, but I'm getting there slightly more quickly. So negative 800 degrees plus 720 degrees is negative 80 degrees. And that means I'm almost there, right? So I'm at negative 80 degrees. It's still negative, so I've got to add another 360 to uh, turn it into a positive number. And that is 200 80 degrees and that number is the smallest possible positive answer that's coterminal with the original angle given it's between 0 and 360 degrees that's my final answer for part C okay so um, and you could have done that by adding to negative 800 360 then add 360 then add 360 and gotten to the same answer um, so it can be sped up slightly if you're capable of doing that. Now I've been, I've said a couple of times at least that the choice of 360 degrees for one full rotation around is arbitrary. And we talked a little bit about how maybe that has to do with the fact that 360 is divisible by so many numbers that um, 360 is very close to the number of days in a year and of course one time around the Sun takes about 360 days it's 365 actually but you can see how someone might call it 360 for simplicity's sake um, but it's arbitrary it's a very arbitrary designation um, I guess if we lived on a different planet that cycled the uh, the planet that circled around the Sun in say 753 days we might have used 750 degrees is equal to a circle I mean it's an arbitrary decision anybody could have come up with a number this is the one that everybody settled on well the next kind of measurement uh, that we're going to talk about is not arbitrary it's defined and it's very clear what it is um, and why it is what it is. So uh, let's say that we have a um, circle centered at the origin. I'll do my best to draw a circle. Um, sometimes my circles don't look very circular. You just have to pretend that that's a perfect circle whose center is at the origin. Um, okay. So if that circle has radius r, okay, and that's a measure that we could have for any circle is its radius. If I were to take that length exactly, the length of the radius, and travel along the circumference of the circle, if that were a circular pathway, I'd be um, on the circular pathway and I'd go exactly R units along the circular path, along the circumference, then the ray that could be drawn from the center of the circle from where I stopped, having gone R along the path of the circle, the angle created is 1 in my unit of measure of angles. And so uh, no matter how big the circle is, if you go radius length around the arc of the circle, you'll always get a, uh, an angle that's exactly this size, no matter how small or big the circle is. And um, because it comes from the radius, we call the measure of that angle one radian. So a degree is very small. There are 360 of them to make up a circle. A radian is a very large measurement. So it's kind of like comparing miles to centimeters. It's not exactly the same. 
but they're in different units of measure and one is a very big distance mile and versus a centimeter which is a very small distance well that's kind of what we're encountering here there are different measurement systems different units of measure the degree and the radian and they're very different sized um, and since I said it would take 360 degrees to go all the way around the circle, I kind of like to see how many radians it would take to go around the circle. So if I went another R, I'd stop about right there. And another R, I'd stop about right there. Whoops, about right there. Um, and then another R, I'd stop about right there. So that's four. Another radian I'd stop about there. Five. And another radian I'd stop about there. I don't think I did those actually spaced perfectly. But um, that's almost all the way around the circle with six radians. So all the way around the circle is pretty close to six radians, but it's not exactly that. Actually, I think you know what it is. If you think about it, we've been talking about going all the way around the circle is called the circumference. Do you know um, what the measure of a circumference is in terms of the radius? I know circumference is pi times diameter, but what is that in terms of a radius? Well, it's 2 pi r, right? Isn't that the formula for the circumference of a circle? And r is the length of the radius, and to go all the way around, it takes 2 pi radiuses to go all the way around and 2 pi is approximately 3.14 something doubled so it's about 6.28 and we went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and a little bit that we didn't go that's the 0.28 part and so a radius um, measured along the arc of a circle creates an angle of one radian and that means there are two pi radians exactly not it's about 6.28 but we're going to use the exact um, measurement it, the um, it's two pi radians that's equal to one full rotation not an arbitrary designation. Now as soon as you have two different measurement tools or units of measure, degrees and radians, the natural thing to do is to say, well how would I convert? How do I convert miles into centimeters or centimeters into miles either way? How do I do that? Um, well, um, since we know how big a full rotation is, we can say that uh, because of our equality of one full rotation, 360 degrees, which is one full rotation, is equal to 2 pi radians, which is one full rotation. Okay, And if we divide both sides by 2, we get a convenient um, measurement that 180 degrees, half of a rotation, is considered pi radians. And kind of pay attention to that one. That, that one's really important. We'll be using that one a lot. Um, to get some special angles here, we might even go further and divide this by 2 again. 90 degrees, which is a right angle, is, by the way, pi over 2 radians. And we could write 1 half pi, but nobody does. Everybody makes pi part of the fraction. So 1 half times pi would be... 1 times pi over 2, or more simply pi over 2. And that's the way you'll see that written. And there are lots of other subdivisions that are nice angles that we could talk about, um, and we will uh, pretty soon. But at any rate, um, that is the way to convert from one to the other. And so I'd like to do a couple of conversions very quickly um, with you so that you get an idea of how that works. So let's say I had a 60 degree angle and someone said, well, how big is that in radians? So what you would do is you would want to multiply your initial angle, 60 degrees, 
by a form of 1. You want the degrees to go away, and you want it to become radians. And so for that to be a form of 1, we have to have something that equates a certain number of radians to a certain number of degrees. And if you look at the one I put the star on, that's the one we'll use most of the time, um, pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. And 60 and 180 cancel, leaving a 3 in the denominator. So that's pi over 3 radians. By the way, I'm writing RAD behind this every time. In reality, the radian measure is used throughout the rest of your math courses that you'll ever encounter. All angles will always be in radians. And so most people, after they've learned it, uh, end up dropping the unit. And everybody assumes that if it's an angle, okay, so if we started with an angle, that someone said is 60 degrees, and we convert it to radians, the angle is pi over 3. And you don't have to say radians or write radians. That's pretty typically done, just, just to, so you know. OK, now, um, going the other way, what if I had an angle that was known to be 5 pi over 6? How big is that in degrees? And now, I'm going to write the radians in here. Uh, because the process we're doing of multiplying by a form of 1 to make the units work out correctly, that's called dimensional analysis. And some of you may have done this, like in physics or chemistry. I think I first saw it in chemistry, but I used it in physics as well. Um, dimensional analysis. I think that's what it's called. Now that I'm writing it, it makes me wonder if, I, if that's what it's actually called, dimensional analysis. Okay, I think it is. But anyway, that's a, a technique of multiplying by a form of 1 so that the units work out how you want them to work out. So I want to multiply this by 1, so I won't change its value. I'll just change its units. I want the radians to go away, so I'm going to write radians in the denominator. And I want it to turn into degrees, so I'm going to write degrees in the numerator. And how many degrees are equal to how many radians? Well, it's 180 degrees that's equal to pi radians. So doing the arithmetic, the pi and the radians would both cancel. You'd have 5 sixths times 180 degrees. 6 goes into 180 30 times. 30 times 5 is 150 degrees. And if you didn't write the degree symbol, I would think you meant 150 radians. And look how big a radian is. That's like almost a quarter of a circle. Uh, 5 pi over 6 is not 150 radians. It's 150 degrees, but it's not 150 radians. 150 radians, you'd be going around that circle a lot of times, over 20 times. Um, to get to that angle, and that's just silly. So be very, very careful that if it is an angle in degrees that you write the degrees symbol. I can't stress that enough. Um, because if you say 150, my assumption will be you mean 150 radians if the answer is supposed to be an angle. So if you meant degrees, write the degree symbol. You can always write the radian if you want to, but as I showed you right here, this pi over 3 answer that we got, right above the 150 degrees answer. Uh, a lot of people don't write the radians after a little while, so you can do it for a little while, but eventually you'll just drop it off like the rest of us do. Okay, so that ends um, part one of 9.1, and I'll go on to the next video.